Uh, welcome back, everyone. So we can resume our uh, event. Uh, the next speaker for today is uh, Professor Adelio Mendes from the University of Porto. Uh, his speak today will be of much interest for us, the ESRs of solar 2 chem, as uh, his main research in interest is in uh, uh, solar electrochemical cells. Uh, and also, we should pay much attention because he's quite ac active in technology deployment as his lab uh, uh, already created uh, five startups. So uh, we are eager to hear your presentation, Professor. Thank you for the kind uh, introduction. So let me um, see if I can share my screen. Where is my screen? Just a second. Windows. That's it. So I guess you already you can already see my screen. Uh, yes, we can do. Uh, we we do. We do. Thank you. Let's see if I can put here the. Cannot. Well, that's fine. So, uh, good morning to, to everyone, and uh, thank you for the kind invitation. So, I'm going to uh, speak today about photoelectrochemical devices for different applications. So, I'm coming from Port City in the north of Portugal. It's a beautiful city. You should visit if you want. Um, Photoelectrochemical cells are, uh, were initially proposed for water splitting, for producing hydrogen, but you can also use them, as you are going to see, to charge batteries, so uh, the so-called solar redox flow cells, and more recently also uh, photoelectrochemical cells for um, carbon dioxide reduction. Uh, we are only addressed the two first topics. This is a uh, research that uh, started in the 70s and uh, is being progressing uh, slowly first, but now very fast in terms of solar to fuel uh, conversion efficiency. So uh, there are already uh, several devices that overcame the 10% efficiency. Some of them already reached 20%, which is an amazing um, uh, landmark. Um, why for water splitting? Um, why using a photoelectrochemical device uh, when you can have uh, photovoltaic electricity and electrolyzer and do the same, so producing hydrogen? So um, there were there were some studies uh, on this topic because it's quite relevant. And uh, what we learn is the photoelectrochemical devices, though less mature than electrolyzers uh, or the electrolyzer um, um, pathway, the photoelectrochemical devices are overall cheaper and they can be more efficient because you can uh, um, harvest the sunlight for producing uh, free energy of Gibbs, means the electrolysis, at the same time to heat up the water and decrease uh, the, uh, the oxidation reduction potential of water. So uh, you have a synergetic effect where you get uh, free energy of Gibbs and at the same time temperature. And so the overall process, it's uh, at least um, theoretically cheaper um, than it compared to the uh, uh, photovoltaic electrolysis. Uh, my good friend Avner Rothschild uh, performed a, a very interesting study where it compares uh, different strategies for producing hydrogen. So this is the solar to hydrogen efficiency. So if you use a photovoltaic panel of 19% uh, of efficiency, you can produce hydrogen 
uh, with 12.8% uh, um, uh, efficiency solar to fuel. If you use a, a PV pack, uh, because probably you know that we cannot use just a, a semiconductor to produce um, hydrogen out, out of the electrolysis of photoelectrolysis of water. Normally, you you uh, uh, work with a, a tendon device where you have uh, the PV and uh, the semiconductor and combined together to produce higher voltages. Otherwise, you cannot reach uh, the voltage for uh, the the water splitting. If you assume a very efficient uh, semiconductor displaying 10 milliamps per square centimeter in a PV pack arrangement, uh, you are expecting to get 12.4 percent, which is mostly uh, uh, the same efficiency as for the electrolysis. Uh, but uh, because uh, the current density by the photovoltaics normally is higher than uh, 10 milliamps, uh, which is the limited uh, limiting um, um, current density for the photoelectrochemical, uh, the, the, the photoelectrode, um, uh, then you are wasting some energy. So uh, uh, after the road file, uh, Rothschild uh, suggested to combine the production of hydrogen plus power. And, and he demonstrate that we can reach almost 20% of efficiency uh, combined the two. Obviously, when you combine a semiconductor um, photoelectrode with a PV uh, photovoltaic cell, you have a tendon that overall the efficiency is higher than 20%. In this case, it's, uh, it's about 25%. If you also consider uh, 25% percent or if you want a, a tendon photovoltaic device with a much higher efficiency such as uh, 25 or 30, in this case 30, you also can get uh, using um, uh, uh, a photovoltaic device, you can get 20.5 percent of efficiency uh, solar energy to hydrogen. So uh, the two systems are competing each other very closely. So, but this study was just a theoretical study. It's, it's not, not such a thing as a photoelectrode. Well, there are some photoelectrodes of 10 milliamps, but uh, uh, they are uh, quite unstable. I have uh, um, mostly three possibilities of arrangements when uh, um, we speak about photo uh, electrochemical uh, devices. You can have a photoanode, a photo anode, a photocathode, or both, or just one of them. You can have um, the, the so-called PEC-PV, so a photoelectrode combined with a PV cell for producing the, the photovoltage, as I mentioned. Or you can uh, have what we call integrated a photoelectrochemical cell, as you can see here. The integrated a photoelectrochemical cell is nothing but a photovoltaic cell or a, a tendon a photovoltaic cell that is integrated in the, um, the electrolyzer, if you want, in the photoelectrolyzer device. And since it is integrated, you benefit from the thermal um, integration of the system. So um, if you compare using a a standalone photovoltaic uh, cell compared to integrated uh, photoelectrochemical cell, the difference is the thermal integration, nothing more than the thermal in in integration, which benefits the efficiency actually. And following this pathway, um, Sophia Hansner, um, who is going to speak uh, later or early this afternoon, uh, designed a fantastic device um, with a, a concentrated sunlight that can reach 17% of uh, solar to fuel efficiency using this strategy. So a uh, photovoltaic cell um, that is integrated in this 
photoelectrochemical device. So the integration benefits, as I said, um, from the thermal uh, integration of the energy. Well, when you use a, a photoelectrode, uh, there are several problems. Up to now, only a metite proved to be stable. This is the first challenge. But the second challenge is we have to have the photo um, electrode should match the energy levels for the electrolysis of water, which which limits a lot, you know, um, uh, the number of viable uh, photoelectrodes. So it has to have a band gap that is not too large. Otherwise, otherwise you you are not going to absorb much solar energy. Cannot be too short. Otherwise, you don't have the photovoltage. Uh, it it should be centered, it should be stable, it should be uh, many things, so many things that actually there is no, not a good photoelectrode viable. We have very good photoelectrodes, but they are mostly unstable. We will see this in a minute. So uh, the most studied photoelectrodes up to now is the um, tungsten trioxide, uh, tri copper oxide, bismuth vanadide, and emmetite. Emmetite is by far the most researched um, uh, photoelectrode, um, probably because it's easy to produce, probably because it's very stable. Um, normally, when we develop these photoelectrodes, we are very concerned about efficiency, uh, energy efficiency. Other uh, topics that are uh, equally uh, relevant are normally neglected. But if we combine everything together in the figure of merit, um, we will find that uh, and some photoelectrodes that we used to neglect may become very interesting. So, um, in a study, in a recent study by our team, we put together scalability, stability, and efficiency. And we assign the same weight for all these um, um, properties. And then uh, we revised. Um, we reviewed all the um, land uh, mark um, reports or articles um, of photoelectrodes, of these photoelectrodes that we mentioned before, the, the most studied ones. And we found that actually um, emmetite uh, is, is one of the best uh, because the scalability, because also the stability uh, not much because the efficiency. Uh, for the efficiency, uh, you have, uh, for instance, a uh, copper oxide is by far much better than uh, emmetite or bismuth vanadite or um, tungsten uh, oxide. Um, but uh, sorry, uh, but uh, uh, the, the the stability of copper oxide is really really very poor. So for these three properties, we consider scalability 100% one square meter. We consider stability at least uh, one year of operation uh, with full stability and efficiency we considered for 100% uh, 10 milliamps. Um, concerning emetite, um, the, the world record uh, efficiency it was um, 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 uh, this 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 article um, by um, Choi. Um, he developed a, a photoelectrode uh, first based only on bare emetite, and uh, he modified with uh, titanium uh, titanium dioxide. Then he hydrogenated, and then he uh, applied. Um, uh, cobalt um, phosphate um, uh, catalyst, and he obtained an amazing photocurrent of six milliamps, which is really very high 
and nobody uh, up to now reach uh, this this mark um, um, any longer. And and it was also pretty stable. It was tested for 100 hours is not much, but it was really pretty stable. Um, we have uh, more recently another study by our team that we developed uh, following a little bit the same approach we developed um, in uh, another uh, approach for uh, um, um, making uh, um, emetite photoelectrode that also um, combines the hydrothermal synthesis uh, several uh, thermal treatments um, and also um, uh, encapsulating with titanium and uh, silicon um, and we obtain an amazing uh, morphology, we, which we call a spongy um, cubes. So this is the the, uh, the the particles we obtain on the surface, and um, it was also pretty stable. So we we tested for more than two thousand hours, and it proved to be uh, to deliver about two milliamps per square centimeter. It is very good but still very um, far away from, uh, you know, the, the target, which is about 10 milliamps for making this technology commercial. So um, uh, we decided also to follow other pathways, such as the uh, tantal nitride. Tantal nitride is a fantastic uh, photoelectrode. Unfortunately, um, the efficiencies are very, very high, um, you can see, and so we, we obtain, without, you know, catalysts, we obtain 8 milliamps. This is the world record now for, for this type of, of um, photoelectrodes, and this, we, which is um, transparent, the, the previous one is not transparent, is is based on a metallic foil, uh, but this one is transparent, 4 milliamps is also world record. This is very nice, but these photoelectrodes are not very stable. Actually, they are quite unstable. And this is the problem uh, of um, all uh, photoelectrodes except for emetite, which is normally very stable. Well, let's move on and address other challenges of this technology. And one of them is actually the scaling up. Um, and uh, so let's move to scale up. So at the beginning, the year 2000s, as mostly no articles on scaling up of photoelectrodes. But suddenly, you know, um, the number of reports showing up uh, were increasing uh, exponentially. Um, you have, um, we, we identified uh, four types of uh, photoelectrochemical cells. As, as the size is, is uh, growing. So you have this one, uh, which is uh, the big uh, illumination system, where you have the, the membrane, the two electrodes. It's a pretty conventional, so the photo absorber is here. Then we have this one, where you can have two photo absorbers, uh, if you want, and here is the um, uh, ion exchange uh, membrane uh, for exchanging here the ions uh, during the electrolysis of water. You can also, for um, uh, front illumination photoelectrodes, when, especially when you have, um, you have here the, the photoabsorber, when you have a photovoltaic cell um, uh, combined, so in a tendon uh, device, uh, it, it's important to have here, uh, side by side, um, the, the country electrode. So this is the photo absorber, and here you have the, 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 the country electrodes. Um, a few years ago, uh, um, Avner Rothschild uh, developed a very interesting saying, a system where he uh, splits uh, the anode from the cathode, um, because he has an intermediate uh, electrode here based on nickel oxo, uh, hydroxide, uh, hydroxide. And uh, this is a very interesting system that splits the two um, uh, photoelectrodes and is now being uh, 
you know, addressed by a spin-off company uh, in Israel. Well, uh, still also some challenges in this approach, and um, the new developments are going on, and they promise to be very interesting. Uh, in my lab, we decide to follow this approach, the side-by-side -side approach, um, while we are researching also on uh, membrane-free uh, systems. So, and we developed larger devices. We, we use uh, computer fluid dynamics um, platform, so Fluent, just for uh, designing the, the flow um, of the electrolyte, in this case, um, uh, water, and uh, the, the flow of, of water uh, during the water splitting uh, to uh, maximize you know the, the efficiency of device. This is very important because you have to have a very good distribution. You have to have you know very small concentration polarization. So there are uh, several things that should be addressed. Uh, so it's a nice device in acrylic made. Uh, because you have uh, electrical resistance of the support. The support is is uh, is a TCO glass. Uh, there are two approaches that you can follow. You can engrave metal lines here just to increase the, the, the conductivity, electrical conductivity of substrate, or you can divide in small um, um, photoelectrodes um, and you can have an arrangement uh, such as this one. And uh, we, we developed this arrangement actually uh, with, with very uh, good results you, you have here. And the, uh, you have here the, 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 the cell, the actual cell. So you have different approaches already in, in, and uh, reporting the lit literature for small cells is easy. For big cells, if you have a big area, you get problems with the electrical resistance and concentration polarization. If, if you engrave the metal lines, there are challenges in terms of efficiency. Um, there are um, a travel uh, challenge also on the manufacturing. This is a very interesting approach, uh, still um, uh, a little bit more expensive. And um, this is the more conventional approach for when you have very large um, areas of um, um, uh, for, 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 of uh, photo absorbers. Can combine um, the photo absorbers, the photoelectrochemical cells with solar concentrators. This is an example with emetite, sorry, with emetite, where we reached with um, this cell, this um, segmented cell, we reached uh, 4.5 milliamps at 10 sun. Um, so uh, still very interesting for emetite, it's still very stable device. Um, but uh, not good enough in, for commercial purposes. So it, it came the idea of using um, these uh, photo absorbers not for the water splitting, but for charging, you know, uh, liquid electrolyte, um, um, like a, a redox flow battery. So uh, instead of uh, charging, uh, the flow, uh, the redox flow battery. You use a photo absorber to uh, to charge the the the, the battery, and the, this proved to be really very interesting approach. It was around um, since the 80s, but nobody was paying attention until 2015, 2016, when we feel uh, a patent on the topic. And as I published this this article, these two articles, but mostly this article, uh, reporting, you know, what we call uh, at the time the solar redox flow cell, and uh, this proved to be the trigger for a great development of this technology, uh, which now you can um, um, have uh, in the literature. So it's just a fantastic development. The, the great advantage of this system is uh, these reactions are very fast. So they are, this is why it's called redox flow cells. Um, these reactions, uh, they have a very small over potential. So you, you can, they are quite efficient. Um, 
and you can harvest not only the electrochemical energy uh, by charging the, the redox pairs that you have inside, but you also can harvest a thermal energy, which is a fantastic thing. And you have here several examples. You can have uh, three different approaches. Um, you can have, uh, you know, just uh, a cell where you perform the charging. Uh, all the um, redox uh, uh, species are here inside. You also can do pumping. So you have here a, a conventional redox flow battery and you have here the solar redox flow cells. You charge here, you discharge here. Or you can have the same device to do the two things with tanks. So it's an integrated um, uh, device. So you can have uh, the, the photoelectrochemic, sorry, the photoelectrochemical cell can be uh, actually uh, the redox flow battery. And so it can uh, uh, act as uh, charging and also discharging. This is the approach. Um, we, we decide to follow this uh, the splitting approach. This is more convenient because you may have this in the roof and th this device inside your house for uh, benefiting uh, thermal energy and for benefiting from uh, the uh, electrical power. And eventually we start, you know, developing the, the corresponding um, um, photoelectrochemical cells. Um, and uh, you have here uh, the design of um, our last uh, device, uh, which is 25 uh, square centimeters. This is a very well designed uh, device. Uh, we, we took a lot of care on the uh, flow distribution for decreasing uh, the uh, concentration polarization, but also to improve the distribution of the flow through the over the surface of the photoelectrode. And here it's an image of or a sketch of the actual device. So this is the photoelectrochemical cell for charging uh, the redox pairs. And here is the redox flow battery. This device uh, is emetite, this is an example, and two photovoltaic cells, actually solar cells, uh, in a tendon arrangement. Um, uh, we obtained uh, 40 milliamps of uh, photocurrent over 25 um, centimeter area, which uh, proves to be a very small um, uh, very small uh, efficiency, solar to solar to electricity. So it's solar to chemical and back to electricity um, energy. So this is a, a slide just to show that uh, this um, you can uh, actually engrave metal structures in your photo electrode to improve the conductivity surface conductivity of the photoelectrode. And uh, I'm, I'm finishing now. Uh, one important thing for this device is the, uh, the simulation, the phenomenological simulation. Uh, we published the first paper uh, recently on the topic for a very uh, interesting system, which is uh, Vanadium um, 2, Vanadium 3, Vanadium 3, sorry, Vanadium uh, 4. So this is Vanadium 4. It's a very interesting system because the, the potential difference is, is 0.6 volts. So you can use actually a single um, a photo absorber to charge it, uh, though you have advantage to use uh, tendon devices. And, uh, this is just, uh, you know, um, some of the equations that uh, we input in, uh, inside. So charge transport, charge conservation and uh, reaction kinetics just uh, the experimental and simulation, uh, some of uh, experimental and simulation works. So uh, future perspectives, uh, we have this very nice article was published uh, in Nature Materials in 2020, wh which um, uh, shows here the photo absorber, actually a tendon uh, photo, um, photovoltaic device of perovskite and silicon. Um, it was choose very interesting uh, redox couples for absorbing uh, most of the energy 
uh, produced in an integrated photoelectrochemical device um, and it was proved stable. Uh, the energy density of this system is not very high, but this is um, probably the best uh, uh, work on the topic of solar redox flow cells, which I want to convince you to that they are very interesting. Uh, this is uh, just a curiosity. Uh, it's a, a device with uh, microorganisms also for charging redox flow um, cells. So now the, for the conclusions, uh, uh, we concluded that uh, I want to conclude. I know that this is provocative, but um, actually I strongly believe that the best approach for the photoelectrochemical devices is actually uh, the integrated um, photoelectrochemical device, where you have the um, uh, 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 photovoltaic cell that is integrated in the photoelectrochemical device. Why is that? There's no more problems with the energy levels of the semiconductors. There's no problems with stability, it's cheap. You have the benefit of thermal uh, integration and membraneless um, devices are possible. And, and so I'm really in favor of this strategy. I, 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 I will continue to explore new semiconductors, but uh, uh, each time more I'm convinced that the integrated photovoltaic devices are the best. If you use uh, solar redox flow cells, it's, it's an amazing uh, system because uh, it you can change the redox pairs and changing the redox pairs, you may find the one that fits um, your photo absorber um, properties. If you use, uh, you know, um, redox um, uh, pairs in non-aqueous uh, solution, you may even uh, use, you know, a photo absorber such as copper oxide, which are very cheap, very efficient, but very low stability for water splitting. They, they may prove to be stable in non-aqueous uh, um, solid redox flow cells. So this is one challenge that I, I leave here. So it was possible to design a very nice 25 centimeter solar, solar flow cell. Um, it was, you know, a piece of art. I can guarantee you still we are working in, in some uh, improvements. It was possible to develop a new, uh, let's say, uh, type of, of emmatite, sponge-like, quite stable and with a high um, uh, photocurrent steel. Titanium um, nitride is, is, is a fantastic material and stable, but we are now addressing this photo, um, uh, photo absorber for the solar redox flow cells, spatially for the non-aqueous ones, because um, we believe this is possible to, to, to work with. Thank you very much uh, for attending, and now I'm open for questions.